the starters got to do what they got to do. Those are the guys that are going to be in there. And we do need to be able to rotate, though, because of the way our offense works is so fast. These guys get tired. They're out on the field a lot. Time for possession. We usually lose the time of possession battle. And that could get that could hurt us. And then you see teams end up putting up big rushing yards on us because our guys are tired. So the backups got to be able to come in and do their thing, too. Yeah, a couple of other names. Again, uh, we don't know where, where these guys are at. Tyreek Black, 6'5", 290. He's a redshirt sophomore. Um, I, I feel like I've heard his name a time or two. Maybe it's just he's a recent recruit. Um, so he's a name I keep an eye on. Dallas Corbett, 6'5", 255. He's a, uh, he's a redshirt freshman as well. Keenan Hester, 6'4", 275. Also a redshirt freshman. I think I've heard those guys' names a few different times. And then Kervin Chout. He is actually a true freshman, 6'3", 251 out of Deerfield Beach. Uh, so he may be another name, but... Uh, that was that was a strength last year, Mike. I think that was a, that was a position group that we kind of looked around and said, "Hey, are these guys? You know, we, we lost a lot. Who do we have?" And and uh, Shane Burnham and that and those you know those guys on the defensive side did a nice job rotating those guys in. Uh, but you know, a couple opt outs maybe hurts us. But we'll see if we have an opportunity for some young guys to to step in and really make a make a name. And you know, we're gonna need a, a good jump, I think. From Char- if, if Charleston and Brash can become kind of bookends on that line, getting after quarterback. You know, just one of those deals where they one, two, three, meet you at the quarterback kind of thing. Um, I mean, that would be huge for UCF because we, we certainly weren't a team that put a ton of pressure on the quarterback um, without sort of blitz packages. And if those two guys can get pressure uh, up front without having to send extra guys, particularly with how young our DBs may be, that would be huge this year for the defense. All right. And then we always talk about it, it goes hand in hand. So if the defensive backs are doing their job and they're they're covering for that extra second or two, that gives these guys – that time they need to get to the quarterback and, and vice versa. If these guys can get to the quarterback, then those young corners on the outside don't have to cover for as long. It, it all goes hand in hand with each other. And it, it's going to be a work in progress, man. Some of these guys, they're going to have to learn on the job. And that, that's part of college football every year. Some, we have freshmen and, and unknown guys come in that you don't know about, and they become superstars. So that's part of the fun of it. Last year, we had no idea about Kenny Tunye coming in. The guy looked great last year. And I'm sure one of these guys this year that we're talking about, we don't have much. It could be like Chris Deloach. We haven't seen much out of him. The guy can come out and be a superstar. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's flip to the offensive side of the ball. Let's stay with the uh, the big uglies, Mike. Let's go. Uh, let's go up front. So the offensive line, a unit that was um, last year, something that we had all touted as what we thought was going to be a huge strength for the program. Um, and I think it's fair to say in the games where we did not fare well. Um, you can certainly look at breakdowns on the O line as one of the root causes uh, of that. So uh, a unit that's that's kind of much maligned from last season. A couple of departures, Jake Brown and Jordan Johnson, are gone, uh, and so the the line has to remake itself a little bit. Uh, and so here's where I'm going with my top five, Mike. And again, these are rumors you're hearing, things you're hearing, whether or not these are true or not. Uh, but the, this is where I'm going with my top five. I'm going Marcus Tatum. He's a uh, uh, he's a transfer from Tennessee. I'm putting him at right tackle. Cole Schneider, right guard. Matt Lee, who's going to step in this year. He's going to be a redshirt freshman uh, at the center position. Uh, Sam Jackson, not that guy, but the other one uh, at offensive guard. And then the left tackle, Edward Collins. That's where I'm going on my on my first five. Again, I have no inside info. These are just rumors and, and you're hearing and trying to piece together interviews, what you're not hearing. There is a name missing that you're probably all asking yourself, where's this kid's name? I don't hear this kid's name. Um, I don't know any more than you do, but that's where I'm going with my first five, Mike. Any uh, any thoughts or disagreements? Well, that's the first thing that popped in my head, Parker Boudreau. Yeah. I mean, that's the probably the guy most people know on the offensive line, the, the casual fan, because they've seen the pictures of this guy looking like Brock Lesnar. They've seen the videos of him pushing trucks up and down the streets. This is the guy that everybody knows, and we've known him for a few years now, transferred from Notre Dame. He he was a big name coming in, and you're telling me he's not going to be starting on the offensive line? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> they came as a little bit of a surprise to me. I think they got to find a spot in there somewhere for him. But also, the offensive line, just like Randy Shannon with the defensive backs, yep. and these guys all have to be able to play different positions too yes. for the same reasons. So – is Boudreaux going to play tackle? Is he going to play guard? I don't know. Hey, he seems uh, like a natural they, guard. I mean, yeah, it's hard to say that. He's he's 6'4", 300 pounds. Um, you know, tackles are usually in that you know that that six you know six 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 seven range. So I, I don't know, maybe he's a little too small for the, for the you know for the tackle spot. I don't really know. But here's here's the thing. It's like, these are these are just rumors, conjecture, things you're hearing, seeing, reading, whispers, all that stuff. Blah blah blah. You said this earlier. 
all this could be a really good smokescreen. Um, I do know, I feel like I haven't heard uh, Boudreaux's name mentioned a ton when they've talked about the offense and they talk about the line. Hypo at a press conference. I don't think he mentioned um, Parker's name at all during that press conference. Maybe that's trying to motivate him, right? Get under his skin a little bit. Let him know, hey, you, you know, nothing's earned here. You got to work for it. You know, maybe there's, you know, obviously there's a lot of rumors about what Parker's interests are outside of football. Maybe there's, this is their way of saying, like, you got to get serious about this and you've got to commit to football. Who knows, Mike? I mean, this this could all be a big smoke screen. Here's the thing that I was most uncomfortable writing down when I, when I wrote this down or when I read this or when I saw, that, saw this or heard this. Edward Collins seems like a really good kid. 6'6", 310. He had a rough year last year. He he came in at spot duty a few times. That Tulsa game, he just looked like he had no idea what was happening at times. I think he had like two really bad false starts. Um, you know, maybe a year under his belt, more seasoning and gets him a little bit better. Um, but I'm, I was surprised that you're still hearing some, a lot of positivity out of Edward Collins. Not that I thought that he should just, you know, go away because he had a couple of bad games, but, uh, um, you know, I certainly thought that, you know, he would probably fall in that second group. Um, and maybe that'll ultimately be where it's at. Marcus Tatum being a, a, a transfer. We don't know much about him. Six, six, three fifteen. uh, again, played at Tennessee. Um, so who knows, Mike, I, I guess. We, so you, you'd swap in Parker, you think, and, and move maybe, Sam Jackson to left tackle and, and put Collins on the bench? Yeah, that would be my first guess, yes. Move Jackson over and put Boudreau in there. Um, the, the number one thing is cohesiveness between these guys. So they, you always you often hear it's not the five best, but it's the best five. How do these guys work together? Um, that the coaches, you're going to have to trust and, and see what they think. But um, we, the one thing we can't have is false starts. I mean, that just drives you nuts, especially in our offense where we're moving so quick and you, you got that defense on their heels and all of a sudden you have a false start and you give them that chance to reset and then you're moving back five yards. It's a killer. It, it's an absolute killer. And those are the things that we can't happen. So the least penalized guys are the guys that should be out there on, on every play. Your other, your, I guess the other encouraging thing, you you know, Hypo went out of his way to really praise Matt Lee um, coming in to step in at the center position. Uh, obviously, Matt Lee, uh, you know, was, uh, you know, I guess the backup in all intents and purposes last year to Jordan Johnson, who played pretty much every freaking snap. So, um, you know, the, the anchor of the line sounds like Hypo and that staff feel really good about Matt Lee. So that's that's encouraging. A couple of the names that you may hear this year, again, just kind of going through uh, the depth chart a little bit. Um, some guys you may hear, Loke, uh Puele, he's the 6'4", 320-pounder from Hawaii. I, there's no way I said his name right, by the way. Uh, you may also hear from Josh McMullen, where's number 60, 6'5", 290. He's another name that you may hear out there as well. Um, and Patrick Barnett, I feel like this kid, 6'6", 305, freshman out of Key West. Um, that's a that's a big size. That's a that's a big kid, Mike. That's a big frame. I wonder if he'll get an opportunity this year. Uh, and then uh, people are probably going to wonder about Paul Rubel. Uh, he is the 6'10", 300-pounder from, from Germany. Sounds like it, you know, the coaching staff probably feels he's still got a, a, a ways away. He's probably a bit of a work in process. I don't know how much you'll see of him on the field this year, Mike. So, um, but I mean, this is a group that if we're going to win, I mean, it's this is no secret, by the way. This isn't like revolutionary football analysis. The line's going to carry us as far as we go, um, and so hopefully, this is a group that we get, you know, uh, production out of this year and, and can keep everybody upright and uh, and and create some gaps for our uh, for our speed guys. That's right. Uh- Coming into last year, we had all the hype about the offensive line and how this was the best offensive line we've had ever at UCF, and it turned out to not be the case. Hopefully now, I mean, we we got a lot of experience now on the line. We talk about having a young center, but the other guys have had a lot of experience. Um, They don't have to block for long. You know, we get the ball out pretty quick. Dylan Gabriel is, is quick with the decisions, and our running backs, you know, they're through the hole in a second. So the key is cohesiveness. And keeping it clean, no flags, no offensive holdings, no delay games, no false starts. You can do that, then the offensive the line has done its job. An extension of that line is the tight end spot, Mike. This is a position last year that we all ranted and raved about, um, and, and not in the most positive ways at times, because we want to see more production out of the tight end. And uh, that just wasn't something we saw, at least in this this last iteration of Heupel's offense, the, the year before that. Uh, Kalubi Ali had a little bit more productivity from that role, but it sounds like nothing has changed. Uh, Jake Hescock, uh, who is a redshirt senior, sounds like he has continued to lock up that starting spot. Makes a ton of sense. He obviously knows Hypel system really well. He's a big guy, 6'7", uh, 252. So you know he fits in with what uh, 
what Hypo wants to uh, to, to on the blocking scheme. But Hypo is not the only guy that's uh, sort of in that room these days. Obviously, we have our new our co offensive coordinator Alex Golesh who uh, formerly a tight ends coach at uh, Iowa State a few times. So he has uh, some tight end experience. And we brought in some young guys, some new guys. Maybe not young. Maybe it's not the right way to say that. Uh, Zach Marsh Wojan. He's a 6'5", 235 uh, uh, guy, junior from uh, Community College out in California. And uh, another couple of uh, young guys, I think, Jordan Davis, uh, Gabe Davis's younger brother. I think he's going to be re, uh, rehabbing an injury. I'm not sure if he'll get a chance to play. And then we have Tony Forrest Jr. He's a 6'4", 235 freshman out of the Jacksonville area, Mike. So we've been asking for more productivity out of the tight ends. Obviously, I think it sounds like Hypo is pretty effusive in Hescock and what he does. Said Zach Marsh Wojan was still learning some stuff. Um, where do you see, I guess, the tight end spot? And, and what do you think we get from a productivity standpoint? Hescock looked okay last year. I, I liked what I saw out of him in glimpses. And – there was a quote earlier this offseason from Heupel saying that he's really picked up the offense a lot better and we're able to do more things with him. Now, is that Heupel just being Heupel and just doing coach speak and throwing it out there, or is it is he expanding the role of the tight end this year? Now with Golesh in there, Golesh is known to be more of a tight ends guru, kind of, you know? Where he was, where at Arizona State? Iowa State. I, I believe they threw to the tight ends a lot. Yep. And I think it may have been their leading receiver was the tight end. So is he incorporating a lot more of that stuff into the offense this year? We're going to see. The other guys, um, uh, I'm sorry, Marsh Wojan. Zach Marsh Wojan, yeah. I mean, transfer. Sometimes these transfers come in and they're able to step up right away, and sometimes they need time to adjust to a new system. So that we're going to find out. But Hescock seems to know what he's doing out there. Seems Last year, uh, he's a big target, which I like. And the whole middle of the field should be open for him. So that that's the guy that we need out there as a security blanket, like Luby Ali was on that on a third and long over the middle. The outside guys are covered, and, and they're leaving him open. That's the guy we need. And the red zone, too. You, we don't really see the tight ends used too much in the red zone, but maybe that's something we can do with, with his size. It'd be ideal for him. Hescock had nine catches for 87 yards and two touchdowns last year. So when you talk about using him more, hopefully that means more than nine catches. Uh, yeah, to your point, listen, we have a ton of skill guys that we're going to get to later. I don't know how we're going to play all these guys that I have listed under our skill position. So you, you, you say to yourself, hey, you know, maybe we don't need a, a, an all-world tight end because we have all-world everything else. But at the very least, you need the tight end to be a threat that the defense has to honor. Um, and I think that's the thing that you want to see is that the defense knows we've got to, we're going to have to keep an eye on, you know, on whatever number, number 88, cause he may leak out of the, out of the, out of the wing there and get a, get an easy one. Or we had to keep an eye on this, this Marshall Ocean guy. Cause he, he can burn us down the middle. Like you at least want defenses to, to know and honor the fact that you have a tight end on the field that you're not afraid to throw the ball to. I felt like most of the people who scouted UCF were just like, they're not throwing the tight end. So let's not worry about it. Um, and I think hopefully maybe that's at least something that, from an offensive, you know, game plan standpoint, from a wrinkle standpoint, that uh, that Golesh can bring in and uh, and and have that in there. Sounds like it's Hescock's job, and which again, I don't think he's done anything to lose it by any stretch. But we'll see if some of these young guys are, and and uh, Zach Marshall Wojan coming in, if they can uh, they can add some some flavor to what we do there on the uh, on the tight end spot. Speaking of speed, guys, my tight end is fine. We're good there. Wide receiver is another spot where there's just so many names. I, I tried to do three col- – I ran out of columns. I ran out of names. I just started putting names everywhere here. Uh, so we have so many speed guys on the outside. Let's talk Let's talk receivers for a second. We know who we lost. Our you know our all-world receiver last year, Gabe Davis, is gone. But we have pretty much the entire uh, you know uh, starting unit and most of the second and third unit coming back this year as well. So assuming UCF trots out a three-receiver set, which is typically what, uh, what Hypo likes to do, Here's what I got for the first three guys trotting out. I got Trey Nixon. I got Marlon Williams. And I got Jalen Robinson. Those are the first three I have trotting out. Mike, again, this is probably a crapshoot, probably a roll the dice situation. Um, what are your thoughts on at least the first three, you know, the hype will brings out for the first play of the game? I love those three. <laughs> Trey Nixon we've seen now for a couple of years. Big explosive receiver down to feel fast, making long catches many times, whether it was with Mackenzie Milton or with Gabriel last year, how many times do we see him just burn guys down the sideline? I know people give him crap for only only running that route, just basically going straight, go deep, and, and just wait for the ball. But the guy makes the plays most of the time. So I, I love mixing there on the outside. 
Marlon Williams. This kid I've really seen 